This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. Welcome to today's Talk Business and Politics Daily. I'm Roby Brock. We appreciate you tuning in. We're going to talk some exports today. I have got with us William Burgess, who is with Power Technology in the great state of Alexander, Arkansas. I'll let you explain where that is. He's the past chairman of the Arkansas District Export Council. And Linka Horakova, who is the CEO of LH Global Solutions and the new chairperson, chairwoman of the Arkansas District Export Council. Welcome to both of you for being here. Hello. Thank you for having yeah. us. Uh, let's get some formalities out of the way. You guys have a big uh, event coming up, I believe, in May, but you got a deadline in April before mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. um, this is to celebrate and recognize people who are doing some big stuff in exporting in Arkansas. Tell me about the event coming up, the deadlines that are out there, and nominations that you're looking for. Absolutely. As you know, exports are very important for the Arkansas economy. We exported 60.3 billion worth of products out of Arkansas last year. And companies that export employ about 50,000 people in Arkansas. So it's very important that we recognize them. And we have Governor's Award for Excellence in Global Trade to do that. This is the ninth year uh, for the award to be in existence. We started it together with the World Trade Center and um, also U.S. Commercial Services and AEDC. Yep. And uh, William uh, is the events chair this year, so he can oh. tell you a little more information about what we're working on this year. Have you ever won the award before? Has your company ever won the award? I won, won the, award? the award before I was the chairman. <laughs> so just for the record. Yeah. For the How about record. you? Have you ever won the award no. before? I worked on Are you it serious? all nine years. Oh my goodness. So, <laughs> all right. Tell me a little so, bit more about what you got coming up. So the purpose is to recognize the best exporters in the state of Arkansas. And typically we do that not just for the large companies, but also for the small and medium companies as well. And then we give out a Rising Star Award as well for, for those just getting started in exporting who maybe don't have a long track record, but who are getting, you know, disproportionate uh, traction in the international markets. So it's uh, great to hear all the stories that people come up with as far as, you know, where they've been successful, where they've exported to, and, uh, and how they're doing it. I think that's the important thing is Arkansas needs to hear how other companies are being successful and then we can replicate those best practices yeah. and create more jobs. Yeah. Now, we uh, we don't get a lot of international traffic on this TV show, so I can't say that I'm a big exporter of our media product here, but we do get a lot of out-of-state traffic uh, mm -hmm. on stuff. But mm -hmm. anyhow, maybe one of these days there'll be a category for me in the media to do that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what has been happening uh, in, ex in exporting in Arkansas. Linka, you mentioned that uh, I think last year $6.3 billion mm -hmm. in uh, exports Where's the bulk of that exporting going, and how has that grown over the last couple of years from where we've seen exports in Arkansas? Yeah, um, that's a good question. So about one-third of our exports are going to Canada and Mexico. Last year, we exported $2.1 billion worth of uh, merchandise to these two countries. Um, after that, our other export destinations are France, China, and the United Kingdom. All right. Where do you sit? Where does Power Technology see? You do a lot in Germany, aren't you? We do a lot in Germany, yeah. in the UK, and in, in Asia as well. Um, about 25% of the the work that we produce in Alexander, just across the the, <laughs> the county line, the county line yeah. from from Pulaski County. Uh, about 25% of that work goes goes abroad. Uh, supports about uh, eight to ten jobs yeah. in the, in the Little Rock Metro, so we're happy about that. Are you seeing Are you th seeing things grow over the last several years? Has mm -hmm. it been big growth, quantum leap growth? Has it been mm -hmm. slow and steady progress? Mm -hmm. And just when you look at the numbers overall, I think uh, you know Europe has had its challenges with the economic downturn. Uh, they're starting to recover there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Asia, obviously, the economies are growing at a faster pace. Um, I think China is still growing twice as fast as the United States. And uh, definitely we see some, some activity in, in Asia uh, as well as China. You mentioned Asia. There is a little bit of a little turf battle going on right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got uh, what we're describing as trade or tariff wars going on mm -hmm. between the U.S. and particularly China. Um, this is all kind of started over steel. You guys have done a survey about s the Arkansas um, steel exporters. What, what has the survey found? 
So we ask Arkansas companies that import steel and use it in their production or in make it a part of their final product, um, how these steel tariffs may impact them. And we got 98 responses from these companies and 43% uh, of companies say they use imported steel because the steel that they need for their production is in short supply in the United States. And 13% of companies in Arkansas cannot find the right steel here in the United States at all, so they don't have any other option. So they have to import. Need, yeah, so we need it. So, are, are, so does this make sense to have this type of tariff battle that we see going on that the Trump administration has started? Well, um, only 10% of companies said that the tariffs will have no impact. So that means that 40% of companies said they're very worried that um, their costs will rise. And 16% um, of these companies said they're worried or concerned about having to lay off their employees. Yeah. And 34% are just, um, they said that the tariffs will have negative impact on their business. Yeah. So you guys wade overseas quite a bit and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And the last time I had you on, William, we talked, to, which is almost, back, I think it was last June mm -hmm. is when you were here last. Yeah. And we were talking about, um, at the time, NAFTA, TPP, mm -hmm. These were all in the conversation stages. I think TPP had been torpedoed. NAFTA mm -hmm. was, we're going to be looking at NAFTA 2.0. Right. Um, are things headed in the right direction or the wrong direction in your estimation? I think with NAFTA, the good news is um, there's another round of NAFTA negotiations, I believe next week uh, or later this month. Um, it, it seems to be looking positive um, that we might actually get an agreement there. Um, and it'll be a good agreement, though, is the question. I think it'll be a better agreement than what we have, um, and certainly more modern, um, reflecting some of the, the mentality that was in TPP and uh, TTIP as well. Um, you know, in general, last time I was here, I certainly said we need more free trade agreements. And, you know, I, I think it'd be nice if we had more trade agreements with, with Asia, maybe with China. Those usually take a little too long to negotiate, yeah. years to negotiate. So. What we may see out of uh, the administration is just an agreement on uh, on tariffs moving forward. Let me ask this question for either one of you, and mm -hmm. I, there'll be some political sensitivities to it, so dance around it how you need to here. But uh, what's the end game of this tariff battle here? What what are we? What do you hope is the final result? Were things that bad in terms mm -hmm. of the conditions that we were operating under that we needed this large overhaul or not? Well, I would say, I think what we're looking for is a free and, and, and fair um, arrangement with China. It, you know, you said earlier that uh, President Trump started the trade war, but I would say it's been going on for 10 or 20 years now, um, especially when it comes to technology, the requirements to share technology with your, your Chinese partners is, is not a fair arrangement. We would never expect that from uh, a Chinese company to share their intellectual property with us here in the United States. Yeah. Requirements to set up joint ventures is another um, expensive proposition. Uh, we have no such requirements here in the United States. So over the years, as, as China uh, has grown their exports, it's been kind of a little bit of a lopsided uh, uh, arrangement. Sure. And now uh, Chinese exports to the United States are four times larger than exports from the United States to China. And this is because of these arrangements. So we, we need an even and fair trading balanced partnership yeah. uh, with Oliver. And Lincoln, let me get your opinion on this. We, we've seen more uh, unilateral trade negotiations going on in this day and age versus bilateral, where we used to see multiple countries kind of come together, at least from the United States perspective. You, you see things all over the world in the consulting you've done and what you do uh, now. Is there a better, is, is one way better than the other, I guess is my question, or is there, are there positives in either direction? Um, well, that's a good question. <laughs> I think it, it depends. I mean, it's good to have um, good um, trading relationships and good trading agreements. You want to remove the barriers to trade and um, if either of the agreements can do that for our Arkansas companies, for our U.S. companies, I think we should be part of it. Yeah. 
All right, so one last plug for uh, the event coming up. Who wants to do the certainly. take us home on this? You're the event chairman. You I'm, get to do it. So I will do it. Uh, we certainly want to recognize Arkansas's best and brightest companies, exporters. The deadline for application is April 27th. Um, the event happens on May the 30th at the governor's mansion. The governor and his beautiful wife are both uh, confirmed attendants and will be presenting awards. These awards are great for you know companies that are looking to improve their marketing, um, to show the world that they are world-class exporters. Um, so again, please apply, and we look forward to seeing you at the Governor's right, Mansion. Where does somebody go to apply? They go to a website. ArkansasExports.com okay. is our website, and there you'll find a little bit of information on not just uh, tariffs and, and NAFTA, but also the application. Yep and a lot of more resources in terms of if you're interested in expanding your export opportunities too. There's some good stuff there as well. ArkansasExports.com. All right, we will link to it in the story that uh, has this video in here. Linka, William, thank you both very much for being here. Appreciate you. Best of luck on the event. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that is all for today's program. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Roby Brock. We'll see you next time. Arkansas Electric Cooperative Corporation provides electric energy across two thirds of Arkansas. This is an exciting time in our energy history, with incredible progress being made in renewable energy and storage technologies. As our energy portfolio continues to diversify, we'll maintain an all-the-above strategy to provide reliable and affordable electricity. Ever since the first light bulbs were placed in our members' homes, the electric cooperatives have been the solutions provider for our members, and we want to continue that well into the future. Each day, the promise of our nation begins again. Arkansas and America moving forward. I help make that promise a reality. It's not for everyone, but people everywhere depend on us. Trucking delivers or everything stops. And that's what drives me.